be nice. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. I rise in opposition to the gentleman's amendment and Title 61 of the underlying bill, which adopts the text of, X of S-280, the Federal Permitting Improvement Act. Before addressing my substantive concerns, I have serious procedural objections to the inclusion of Title 61 in a transportation funding bill. S-280, the Federal Permitting Improvement Act, was attached to the transportation bill on the Senate floor through a manager's amendment offered by Senate Majority Leader McConnell. It was adopted without adequate debate in an expedited process just days before the August recess. The bill has not been introduced in the House. Neither the House nor the Senate has had a hearing on the text of this bill, which involves a nuanced area of the law with broad implications for public health and safety. Moving to the substance of Title 61, this bill is a misguided attempt to restrict public input and challenges in the permitting process under the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA. Over 40 years, NEPA has saved time, money, and protected the environment all while providing a framework for wide-ranging input from all affected interests when a federal agency conducts a, an environmental review of a proposed project. Title 61 of H.R. 22 discards this common-sense approach by severely curtailing the public's right to challenge permitting decisions in several ways. First, Title 61 restricts challenges of major federal projects to only parties who file comments within the bill's 45 to 60 days. The bill requires that these comments must be sufficiently detailed to put the lead agency on notice of the issue on which the party seeks judicial review. In other words, a party would have to litigate the issue in the 45 to 60 day comment period, period an extremely tall order for the public. Second, Title 61 requires that courts consider the potential for significant job losses and other economic harms in considering whether to enjoin a project that has been challenged. The bill further requires that courts presume that these harms are irreparable, even if they aren't, tilting the outcome in favor of private interests and away from the public's interest in health, safety, and the environment. This is a radical departure from our laws and would have the practical effect of allowing a project to proceed even where there is ongoing litigation. Indeed, by the time a court determines that a project violates the law, a project could already be completed. Third, under current law, the public has six years to bring claims arising under most federal laws, which provides for citizens to discover latent harms of projects. Title 61 only provides for two years for challenges to the nation's most complex projects requiring a federal permit. Madam Chairman, Title 61 presents a false choice between funding transportation projects and accepting bad legislation without debate or proper consideration that would potentially have disastrous effects on the public's right to challenge federal permitting decisions in court. This is yet another pro pro-corporate anti-safety provision designed by the donor class to restrict access to the courts by the common people. I reserve the